Okay, so um, I'm going to talk today about Archimatica, a digital preservation system that is developed at the company I work at, Artifactual Systems. Um, I'm going to go fairly quickly through these slides, but I've put a link up uh, and uh, if anyone wants to download them, and I believe they'll be distributed afterwards as well. So uh, before I talk about Archimatica, I just want to quickly mention about Artifactual, the company. So Artifactual is a privately held company based in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we have employees in uh, five different countries and we work as a multidisciplinary team. So we employ archivists and librarians as well as software developers and systems administrators. Um, Ar Archimatica is a free and open source software project. It's a digital preservation system and uh, Artifactual is the company that is the lead developer, although the software has been contributed, uh, there have been contributions from developers from a number of different organizations over the years. Um, so I'm going to talk a, a little bit more about Artifactual, the company, um, so you have an understanding of uh, why we built Archimatica. Um, so this is the uh, management team. We have six of us. Uh, three of the people who are on the management team are uh, archivists with either masters or PhD in, in our archival studies. Um, and in our company of 29 people, I believe uh, 10 of them uh, are archivists or librarians. Um, the, the governance team that is made up of four shareholders, uh, Evelyn McClellan and Peter Van Garderen, Peter being the founder of the company, are also both archivists and David and myself are, uh, uh, come from the technology side, so we really try to balance between uh, the technology and the theory. Um, as a company, we follow a model that we call steward ownership. Uh, all of the shareholders are employees. We, we always avoided taking external funding, and we really consider profit to be a means to an end rather than an end in itself. Uh, the, the purpose of the company is to uh, 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 follow our mission, which is to, you know, to provide the heritage community with the technology and experience, expertise required to fulfill their mandate. And in a lot of ways, I would say that Artifactual as a company was both inspired by and uh, very much aligned with the uh, uh, goals of the memory of the world. So now I'm going to try to talk a little bit more about what is Archimatica, which is the main point of my talk. Um, Archimatica is an application, a web-based and standards-based open source application uh, designed to perform uh, as a digital preservation system. Uh, so the initial version of Archimatica, if I go back in the history, started off as a, uh, it was intended to be a plugin for the other open source software project that we maintain, which is uh, Atom, or Access to Memory. Uh, we originally called this Qubit OIS, and uh, it was meant to be uh, a, a fairly small additional part of an archival description, archival management system. Uh, at the same time as uh, that first version got built, oh, the slides cut off a little bit, but the uh, 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 Artifactual received some funding from UNESCO uh, to develop a report uh, and we're working as part of this uh, subcommittee of technology. And um, in that report, um, uh, we, we worked and realized that uh, it was really necessary to build a new uh, separate application, uh, uh, not just make preservation something that was a plug into Atom, but actually its own application. So uh, following that, the next sort of major uh, leap of development came from the City of Vancouver Archives, uh, who were uh, preparing uh, to preserve the outputs of the uh, Vancouver Olympics in 2010. And so uh, we helped them uh, to build their first digital archive using both Atom and Archimatica. Um, the idea was to uh, build a system that was aligned with the the Open Archival Information System, or OIS, uh, reference model. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, Archimatica has continued to develop. There have been uh, 
uh, several years of, of significant growth. Um, there have been some formal reviews, for example, the Interparis 3 project. There was a gap analysis done that uh, really helped to identify areas in Archimatica where uh, additional development was required. But most of the development has been done through organizations that are using the software, uh, funding software development, uh, and then the, the new features are included in the open source project and released to the public. So this is a quick slide just showing some of the organizations that uh, use Archimatica. Uh, this is a list of people who have just started using Archimatica in the last year or so. Uh, so it really is a project that has seen a lot of uh, growth, especially in recent years. Uh, I still haven't really answered, I don't think, what, what, our, what, Archimatica, what Archimatica is. Uh, but before I do that, I want to talk about uh, what is digital preservation. Uh, so I think that it's important to, to understand this to, to see why we have Archimatica or what we're trying to do with Archimatica. And these definitions coming from the Library of Congress and the Digital Preservation Coalition, um, they really point out the fact that uh, you have a series of managed activities. Uh, that, and uh, so you, a preservation system really needs to facilitate uh, that active management process. I also think it's really important to point out that digital preservation is a fundamentally uh, about risk management. Uh, it's not about uh, saying this is preserved and you're done. It's actually more about saying I'm going to do as many things as I can to improve the chances. So you know, in order to build a digital preservation system, you need software and you need hardware. And typically, you need more than one system. You need, you need systems that connect to each other. So you have networks of systems, as well as the actual content that it is that you want to preserve. Uh, also, very significantly, uh, digital preservation is not just technology. It requires governance, uh, fiscal commitment, and uh, a community. Um, so another significant uh, influence on the Archimatica project has come from Nancy McGovern the, from MIT Libraries. Uh, she describes a three-legged stool with technology, organization, and resources. Um, in these, you really need all three areas in order to um, have a successful digital preservation program. Um, and you know, I think it's significant that um, before you talk about the technology, I think this you know, speaks to some of the presentations we saw this morning, but um, you need to think about policies, you need to have an organization, you need financial stability, uh, and most of these things all involve uh, human behavior, and uh, technology is, uh, flows from that as opposed to leading it. So we're getting closer to a definition of what digital preservation is. Um, we know that we want to be able to uh, develop software, probably a, more of a software ecosystem as opposed to a single piece of software. Uh, we need to ingest digital content and prepare it for storage, and we need to make sure we perform preservation actions uh, along the way. This is just a slide that shows some of the examples of preservation actions that can be performed within Archimatica. Uh, and the, you know, the reason that you're performing these is to ensure that this content has integrity and, and you maintain its authenticity. I'm going to get around to describing uh, what is Archimatica eventually here, but this is a diagram that uh, shows the technical architecture of the system. Uh, it doesn't come out so great on this screen, but the point of showing this slide is not to go into the details, but just to show that it's actually a system made up of many components. It's, it's uh, not just one piece of software, but uh, many pieces of software, and they can be installed on one machine or across many machines. and uh, uh, this is now a picture of what the main user interface looks like. Um, the processes within Archimatica can be done in a completely automated way where you don't really use the user interface at all, or they can be done in a very manual way, allowing uh, archivists uh, or users uh, sort of fine-grained control over the decisions as the processing goes uh, through, the, through to the end. Um, we describe Archimatica as being OIS compliant, uh, as a reference model, um, 
you know, we've built that this is the menu bar of the Archimatic application, and we kind of shows that we've tried to take each of the core components of the Archimatic and map it to functional entities within the OIS model. But it doesn't map perfectly, and OIS as a, as a reference model leaves quite a bit up to the implementation. Uh, so that's why we sort of use the word compliant. It's, it's uh, as opposed to, you, you, you can't really describe something as being uh, an OIS system, I don't think. You have to, you have a fair bit of interpretation there. Um, so the, the core functionality within Archimatic is, I think, to do these three things. is to build archival information packages. Uh, it is to be able to store those archival information packages in any kind of storage system that you want, and also to be able to create uh, dissemination information packages to uh, send to access systems. So the, the packages that Archimatica produces are meant to be uh, uh, system agnostic, which means that um, you don't actually need Archimatica software to be able to use the packages. And this is really, I think, you know, it's important to assume obsolescence. Uh, we want the content that we're preserving to last longer than the software uh, that produced it. And so uh, we focused on the architecture of Archimatica and the design to make sure that we're making archival information packages that can be stored in any kind of file system, object storage systems as well and that uh, uh, the apes can be read and understood uh, uh, independently of Archimatica. Uh, so when you come back to that idea of the three-legged stool, you can kind of see that Archimatica fits in, you know, as part of the technology leg um, and, and can help with activities like preservation planning. Um, but it's, uh, it's, sorry, it's important to, you know, make sure that you're doing this, you're using it within the, within the concept of uh, also having an organization and dedicating resources. Um, so we describe Archimatica as having a microservices architecture. Uh, what we mean by this is we attempt to uh, uh, perform preservation actions independently of each other so that it's possible to configure the system to, to f for the workflow that uh, you need in your organization. Um, those microservices are strung together into workflows, uh, which can be configured to be uh, automated or user-driven. This is just a high-level uh, description of the kinds of things that go on. You, you, you ingest digital objects and metadata. It goes through a series of steps uh, and then produces AIPs or DIPs. Um, this is uh, some of the open uh, standards and open source, uh, well, op the tools are on the next slide, but uh, Archimatica uh, will structure all of the metadata uh, in the AIP using premise, uh, or we sort of premise in METS, so uh, the premise uh, preservation metadata standard from the Library of Congress, and uh, the METS uh, XML schema also from the Library of Congress, and the, the AIPs are, are packaged as using the Bagot specification. Um, we rely pretty heavily on PRONOM, which is a technical registry from the National Archives of the UK for file format identification. And Archimatica supports descriptive metadata using Dublin Core and other standards. Uh, this is an example of uh, some of the tools that are kind of shipped with Archimatica by default. Um, really, we think of Archimatic as, a, as kind of like a distribution, like an operating system almost. It's, it's a way of bringing all these tools together, and, and when we package up the software, we're making sure that the various versions of all of these things work together. Um, it's also very important that we're trying not to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we want to use open source software that's been developed across both digital preservation communities and in other communities. So, for example, uh, tools like FFmpeg, which is used with audiovisual content, uh, with you know, video files and audio files. This is not fundamentally a preservation tool, but an open source tool that's used in production of, of uh, those kinds of files. But we can use it within Archimatica and, uh, instead of having to spend time uh, developing effectively the same thing. So the, you can kind of see how the tools fit into different steps. And within Archimatica, you can decide which tools will be used on which file, which file formats for each of these steps. 
Uh, and then Archimatica produces an AIP, which has a standardized uh, structure to it. It's, it's just a folder with content in it. There are some files within there that are, are uh, required by part of the, the Bagot specification. And then you can see there's a METS file that Archimatica creates with all of the metadata describing the contents. Uh, so it is an open source application. Everything about Archimatica is free. Uh, we uh, host both the code and the documentation uh, on GitHub. And uh, really, this is, uh, a, we, we believe, uh, a pretty key part of what makes Archimatica successful. It allows people to uh, use the system uh, independently of uh, their you know, commitment to, the, to a particular company or to a, even to this application. It's, it allows people to learn. Archimatica is sometimes used in uh, universities as, as a teaching tool, uh, but it also allows people to uh, change and develop the software and customize it for their own use cases. Uh, so speaking of use cases, I'm going to go into a couple of case studies here. I'm just going to show quickly two organizations that use Archimatica in a what we would call a, a shared service model. So. You know, digital preservation is a, a difficult activity, and so uh, many organizations look for ways to uh, share the effort together. So JISC is an organization in the United Kingdom that provides uh, technical services to higher education institutions, and they've developed a service they call the Open Research Hub. Uh, ZUSA Institute in Berlin is a university in the state of Berlin that provides digital preservation services to cultural heritage organizations throughout the state of Berlin. So I'm going to just describe a few kind of ways that you can run a preservation system using a shared, a shared service model that we've seen implemented uh, in, in different organizations. Uh, in this model, we're, what we call sort of a shared pipeline model, you have uh, uh, storage disk space effectively storage space is set aside for or each in, each organization that's sharing the service to deposit content into the system the content staging area the preservation system is one uh, sort of in, uh, there's one version of it and it's shared by all the institutions and then their content is stored separately uh, at the end um, another variation of this is where the the service provider, the, the organization providing the shared service, uh, manages the storage for all of the users. Another model is a, a closed pipeline where the users just deposit content and they don't actually have access to the preservation system at all. There's just a service contract between the organization providing the service and, and, and the users of what's going to happen. And this is the model that Zusa uses. Um, and then this is, this is closer to the model that JISC uses, a dedicated pipeline where you actually deploy separate preservation systems for each organization using the shared service. Uh, the idea here really is that the uh, infrastructure for uh, compute resources is common and that the deployment and maintenance tasks are managed centrally, but each organization really effectively has its own uh, uh, dedicated preservation system. And again, that can be done where the storage is centralized and controlled centrally. So here, these are some slides that were produced by uh, Marco Clint at the Zeus Institute a couple of years ago. Uh, he describes how you know preservation is a ha is hard. Uh, uh, digital preservation is also hard. And in his uh, organization's estimation, uh, it was something that the smaller institutions that they work with were having were struggling actually uh, getting a preservation system installed and running, and so they decided to develop a service because Zusa had a lot of experience with high performance computing, with uh, developing infrastructure, and with sharing that amongst institutions. Um, so in their model, they decided that uh, what they wanted to do was uh, sort of bring together the uh, experiences and skill sets of preservation of, of IT, as well as uh, cultural heritage, and make it really a, about a community effort. And so they 
developed a shared service based in Archimatica, um, where it has basically one workflow, one set of preservation, one preservation policy effectively, and all the institutions share this one, one way of doing it. This is a, this might be difficult to see, but this is a picture of <coughs> the service that they ended up with. Um, <coughs> so the idea is that um, small organizations can deposit their content with ZUSA and know that it's being preserved and managed in a standardized way. And the cost to uh, the university providing the service is, is kept very low because it's standardized. It's all the same for everyone. Now JISC, uh, with their Open Research Hub, um, they uh, developed a more complex model. They were not providing uh, preservation services alone. They're also actually focusing on research data management. And so they were building applications uh, to include uh, uh, user interfaces for researchers to deposit data sets uh, that are being cited in papers or articles. And um, they really wanted a system where for a person producing content, they didn't have to think about preservation or know about it, but for the <coughs> professional staff within JISC's members at the universities, the academic research libraries, um, they would be able to interact with the preservation system and perform their own, uh, you know, like set their own preservation policies and uh, really assess what was going on within the system. So JISC built uh, a number of applications including this uh, messaging layer to try to be able to connect everything together. <coughs> Pardon me. One other point I'll make about the JISC model that's quite interesting. They deliberately chose to build this as a service uh, to market it to, you know, there's 200 universities in the UK that are hoping will use this service. And they include options for both using Archimatica and Preservica, which is a, a proprietary preservation system uh, from a company based in the UK. So they really, it was very important to them that uh, from an end user's perspective, it didn't matter which preservation system was being used. So they built this messaging layer in the middle so that uh, effectively you can drop in Archimatica or Preservica into the system and, and they work the same. Uh, so that's actually my last slide. <laughs> so I'll stop there. Thank you.